that. We've had Maria uh, working very hard for the students. She's met with two classes and gave individual critiques with students and um, was very generous with her time. So please help me welcome Maria Bianco. It has been a whirlwind of a couple of days. Uh, I have met some wonderful people, faculty members, as well as students, a lot of talent in this town. Um, uh, I, um, I want to talk about a little bit about my background and, and um, what, what makes me, uh, how my Finnish roots have influenced me as an artist. Um, I grew up in uh, Helsinki uh, at a home filled with uh, paintings. My father was a collector of Finnish art, particularly from the late 1800 to early 1900 period. He loved to go to art auctions and uh, often came home with another masterpiece under his arm. He was also, um, he was also an um, amateur sculptor whose large concrete creations are scattered around the summer house, uh, in the woods and around the summer house. And the, the years have been kind to them because their cold, uh, harsh surface has been transformed by snow and ice and, and rain uh, to softer uh, and warmer tones. Um, so, and then my mother was the, she was the, craftsperson of the family. Um, she was always making something. Her hands were and still are busy making things. She is nearly 95 years old and you would never believe it when you see her. She still loves to tango and, uh, <laughs> and uh, just have a good time. Anyway, when I was growing up, I was always watching her making things. She made uh, baskets out of uh, thin wood shavings and uh, Christmas decorations. She made uh, beady necklaces for my sister and me and uh, lacy bed covers. And then, of course, she made them for our daughters as well. So, so these uh, lacy bed covers will be passed from generation to the next. She, um, just last month, um, my mother belongs to this crafts uh, circle, sewing circle, and her club always, uh, every year, um, this time of year, has a benefit sale and the money goes to some good cause. And my mother always makes something. This year she made around 40 Christmas bells out of small pearls, and they're very beautiful, and usually they sell very well. So she is not about to stop working. Her, her hands are still going strong. She cannot watch TV without doing something useful with her hands. And for her, there is not a minute to waste. I, um, when I was a teenager, uh, I had a large poster on my bedroom wall, and it was the skyline of New York City basking in the brilliant morning sun. And I used to stare at the poster, and I. Used I always dreamt about going to America. I was, I was um, not a very happy teenager, a lot of sulking, and, and uh, I used to write poems about despair and lost love and desire to go someplace else far away. So soon after I turned 20, I uh, did leave home, and I ended up in Cambridge, Massachusetts, a city that in the 60s was, I felt like I had died and gone to heaven. It was so exciting. It was, uh, um, Harvard Square like was like a mini UN with people from different races and ethnic backgrounds mingling about. And I got a job um, at a very unique establishment called Design Research. And it was a showcase store that sold um, mostly Scandinavian uh, goods, furniture and glass and 
and um, dishes, and um, particularly Finnish goods. And they, uh, designer chefs, we call it the DR, introduced the Marimekko dresses and fabrics to the United States as well. So this was the time where, when Mrs. Kennedy came to design research and bought a whole lot of uh, Marimekko. So maybe she didn't come to design research. Maybe design research went to her. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, she, there was a picture of a Life magazine wearing very Marimekko, so everybody was very happy about that. And it was there at Design Research, which, which, by the way, it was started by a, um, it was a pioneering store started by architect Benjamin Thompson who um, was quite well known uh, when, she, when he was alive. And he, um, he personally chose, he traveled a lot, and he personally chose almost every item that was on display. So he was very particular. My job there was to, um, to well, first sell, of course, the finished things, but also to do display. And Mr. Thompson, who was a rather unique person, he would, he, he would give you free hands, but he would come occasionally and look at my display and say, hmm, why don't you put that there? And that was it. He was always very, um, very amiable in that sense. But it was there at Design Church where I truly began to, to appreciate finished design and the uniqueness of it. Uh, because at home, um, excellent design was everyday design. We ate, you know, from Arabia plates and we drank from Itala glass and when the guests came, then that's when Rosenthal China was pulled out. So um, I was very used to having these beautiful things around. But then at Design Search when I really, really started seeing them and the beautiful simple lines of an Alvarado chair or a Itala glass or Arabia plate all coming, and, and the Marimekko fabrics, the bold, um, beautiful uh, designs, all coming from this small nation that was something to marvel at. 